Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. In today's video we're going to be talking about the 5 most underrated characters in Smash Ultimate. Now they aren't going to be in order. These are just characters I think people are sleeping on way too much in this meta and I have done a video on this in the past but this video is a little bit old. I think people have gotten better at recognizing the strengths of some of those characters and a couple of them will be making a return so let's just get right into it. Now the first character that I want to mention is going to be Shulk. Now Shulk is a character that people used to think was really really good but he's slowly fallen off more and more and I still think that this character is absolutely ridiculous and it's probably just because the Shulk main haven't been doing as well which is kind of not true to say because Jared's king has had an amazing year Komei's year's still been decent it's definitely not the same heights that he was getting but he's gotten a bunch of really good upsets and overall had a good year so Shulk players are still doing fine they're just not consistently top eighting majors like Komei used to be doing because he was ridiculous in the pre-quarantine era and is still very good right now obviously but Shulk is a character that allows you to have a lot of creativity and has some very very solid fundamental options which is kind of what you need out of a perfect top tier I think Snake is another perfect example of this you can get so so creative with snake but your normal buttons are still super super solid that you don't really need to be doing all this crazy stuff you can just mix in a b reverse there with shulk you can mix up your monado arts usage you can have your own buster combos you can have jump combos you can have speed combos there's so many things for shulk that are really really strong about him but i think the best part about shulk has to be the defensive play because shulk on the defense is very hard to get in against whether it's speed and he just runs away with you whether it's shield and he just breaks out of your combo or smash for that matter just breaks out of your combo low percents high percents, whether it's jump to get out of some disadvantage or some offstage situation. Shulk is just so annoying to play against. He racks up damage with Buster incredibly quickly, like it's actually unreal. But even if you take away Monado from Shulk, he's still like a high tier, mid tier character because his sword is massive. That thing with the forward air, especially, it covers above him, it covers before him, or rather in front of him, it covers below him. Like that thing is ridiculous. Up air is a pretty solid kill move, and it's nice for juggling as well. And again, when you have speed art and a mix of jump art, you can mix them between. You can kind of track people pretty easily in the air. Back air is a really strong option, even though the hitbox war is a little bit weird. It's out there for a decent amount of time as well. Up air, a shield is very strong. That hitbox is absolutely ridiculous. He has an okay counter, but of course, the main thing is the Monados, which we did already talk about. Monado game on Shulk is just so strong, and it just allows him to have so much potential. The fact that I can kill you at, at literally any percent, and I can live at literally any percent that matters, of course, is super unfair. Now, there is, of course, counterplay to Shulk where you have to be worrying about his arts, but it's almost always Shulk is going to have one of his four core arts because Buster is like kind of a weird art. I feel like it's the one that is definitely important to Shulk for the combo game, but once it gets to like the important scenarios where you need to find the kill, Buster doesn't really have a use for the rest of them definitely do. So you have that core four and you can cycle between, okay, I can just run away from you until Shield comes back. I can like jump away from you off stage and like just stall out my timer for smash to come back so i can get the kill i can go for edge guards shulk just has so many ways to delay for his monado arts that he needs to come back with the use of other monado arts of course there's counterplay to this he's not the best character in the game he's not top five top ten like i used to think he is but he's still a very broken character that i think people are sleeping on a ton just because he's a little bit harder than some of the other broken swords right now now the next character is going to be Terry, and I feel like a big reason why people don't really talk about Terry is going to be because the other Shotos just have more representation by Shotos. I mean, FGC, of course, you have Kazuya with a million reps, you have Ken and Ryu with a million reps. For Terry, he has a couple, but your most prominent one in Riddles doesn't play the character as much anymore. Now it looks like he's going to be picking up Terry for the future, at least having him more as a secondary, which I think is super helpful because one, Kazuya is really hard to solo main, and two, Terry is ridiculous. He has some of the easiest kill confirms in the game, and also also, he just does unrealistic amounts of damage. If Terry hits you with a jab, you're taking 30. If Terry hits with you with down tilt, you're taking 30. If he hits you with a nair, you're taking 30. And every single hit that Terry gets, he can either confirm off of or kill off of. It is unfair. This character's specials are all very good. The thing about Terry, and this is the thing about a lot of Shotos as well, is every single move that he does just by itself does a lot of damage. His specials, you'll get hit by like a side B. Not even like a special side B that you have to do name before. You'll just get hit by a normal side B. You'll take like, I don't know, 20%. This character just does does so much damage and you can combo into these things very very easily it is absolutely absurd he also has probably the best disadvantage out of all the shotos just because of the amount of mix-ups he has with down b with both reiterations of side b it's also fairly fast in the air to be honest terry's just kind of quick as well which was the shotos that is kind of their main thing i guess you could say for ken and ryu they're not that bad for kazuya that's definitely the main problem but terry gets around fairly quickly his lead trapping is also ridiculous especially when you have go meter because down tilt confirms into go and down tilt is such a quick poking option same thing with jab as well another great kill confirm terry's up at a shield is also something that's very 
very scary. Terry's Uppy with the intangibility is ridiculous. This is, of course, the inputted one, but the input isn't, like, that hard where it's, like, I have to dock points for Terry being hard because, spoilers, Terry is not hard at all. If you just learn the inputs, you don't even have to learn the inputs for the move to kill again, which is something that you have to consider. Like, I feel like for Ryu, you would need to know inputs for Ryu. You need to know inputs for Kazuya. Can you? You can kind of get away with it, too, but for Ryu, you need to know that fireball. For Kazuya, you need to know a lot of stuff. For Terry, you just kind of need to know how to use Go Meter, which isn't the hardest thing in the world. The character is incredibly easy to pick up. His neutral is very, very solid. His win condition is really strong and then he has that nice added dlc bonus of the go meter and he has stuff off of grab as well nair i haven't even talked about nair goddamn nair is a kill confirm it does a lot of damage and it kill confirms at a lot of percents it'll kill confirm around 80 it can kill confirm into a spike at like 40 it is just such a ridiculous move he has air combos again that up is insane i'm kind of repeating myself so i will cut myself off here but the tldr of terry is everything that he does kill confirms everything that he does kills and this character is just stupid now, the next character is going to be Dr. Mario, and, and don't laugh, this character is still bad. Dr. Mario isn't great, but he's not this bottom three character that people seem to paint him out as, and I think people are realizing that more and more, but Doc's just kit is incredibly solid. I want to talk about his specials specifically, because Doc has some of the best specials in the game, to be honest. Pill is a ridiculous approaching move. It allows for combos. It's just an annoying projectile. It allows a character that is as slow as Dr. Mario to put pressure on you, which is absolutely huge. Without Pill, Dr. Mario's neutral is so much worse. Cape is just a broken move in general. You've seen that in Mario as well. Just having a nice reflector and something that can kill people at any percent is very, very strong. Upbeat. Up at a shield for Dr. Mario is ridiculous because this thing is going to kill you like probably 130%, even mid stage. Well, mid stage may be a little bit over exaggerating, but the move is very, very strong. It has a nice hitbox on it as well, so it makes hitting Dr. Mario's shield really scary. And the down B. Down B is one of the scariest X factors in this game because sometimes you can just get down throw down B by Dr. Mario at 60 to ledge and you die. And you die hard. You explode low because that move is very very strong it helps with his recovery as well it's just something that's scary to deal with it isn't making his recovery good by any means Doc's recovery is still very bad but things are always helping like hey little max still is a bad recovery but that nair tech or the downer tech whatever it is that makes it so he goes further after his jumper side b it is still helping which is always nice dr murrow's grab game is also incredibly strong down throw is going to be a combo throw for a ton of percents and back throw is just like a ridiculously strong kill throw like that move kills you probably like 120 110 around the ledge it is very 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 good and dr murrow's aerials as well his aerials are ridiculous. Up air just hits you for a lot of damage. It combos into itself nicely if you hit certain angles of it. Back air is very, very strong, and it's going to be a pretty decent hitbox on it. Nair's a bit of a weird one because weak Nair sucks, and that's going to be the initial hitbox or the initial hitbox. You're not going to be hitting Sour Spare Nair a ton, or at least you probably won't be. But if you do hit it, it's still pretty strong since it's at a nice angle. Forward air, again, another thing about Dr. Mario, just he has that X factor forward air. If you hit sweet spot forward air, you're going to be killing people at like 80. That move is ridiculously strong. Down air is a super strong spike just kind of like your falcon kick or your falcon down or your ganon down or just a nice meaty down that kills people very very early but these moves combo together when dr mario grabs you you take 40 when you get hit by a pill you take 40 dr mario is just doing so much damage to you off of every hit his tilts are kind of mid like down tilts actually pretty good because it stands at a nice combo angle but the rest of them are just like your typical they're okay tilts but down tilt does set a nice angle and it can kill from as well which is pretty nice but dr mario despite the fact that he's so slow i think approaching with pill just makes him so much better as a character i also think slingshot is something that can make him better just because slingshot bear especially again with pill confirms can be very very good his grab game is ridiculously strong he's just scared to play against he explodes you at zero his smash tags as well i usually don't talk about smash tags when we do these videos just because most smash attacks it's like yeah, it's a super strong move that dies, but it's like, that's just kind of the whole gimmick. But Dr. Mario's is like that, but cracked up, because that forward smash isn't even that slow, and it's still so ridiculously strong. They just made this character super jacked up, game of bad recovery, and said, that'll do. And honestly, it did do, because the character still isn't good by any means. This isn't Doc propaganda. This character isn't great, but he's a little bit better than people are giving him credit for. You can make runs with Doc. You can make upsets. It's hard to be consistent, but it's not impossible. And the next character is going to be Korn. I think Korn gets overshadowed a lot just because they have a sword, and swordsmen and ultimate are extremely broken. And Korn is just very, very good. They ain't Roy, they ain't Cloud, they ain't Lucina, 
but just a super solid character that people just leave to the wayside because like, oh, why play Corrin? Well, I can play the other ones. I'll tell you why you play Corrin. Her aerials are broken. That forward air comboing is super nice. The up air is massive. It's one of the best juggling tools in the game. The back air gets you super early killing, super good positioning. The spacing on back air can also be really good. It makes it chafe on shield a lot of times because you get pushed back a nice amount. Down air is kind of mid. Nair is pretty good as well, just a massive hitbox that combos. Down air, down air is not, like, I guess you can get kills with zero at down air, which is like, nice to have but it's not an option that i would super super rely on but the rest of her aerials are all very very strong her tilts are all pretty good as well especially down tilt down tilt's pretty fast frame five it sets in a very nice angle as well because it sets up for corn to juggle and again one of the best things about corn even though her mobility isn't great is the fact that her juggling is ridiculous because of how big upper is that's what tells you upper is a good move that a character that is slow as corn is able to get under you and just explode you one of the downsides of corn of course is her speed but she does have this massive burst range option that kind of makes up for it in pin pin is still a ridiculous move i know it's not smash 4 but this move is still very very fast it kills extremely early it does a ton of damage it's amazing for two frames you could use it for edge guards though i'd use probably back air more for edge guards pin is just very good up b as well for corn is a very strong option it makes her really hard to mess with off stage because the up b hitbox is absolutely massive above her it's just really hard to contest and it's also decently strong like if you can hit someone with an up b uh, like at the towards the top of the screen you're gonna be killing them fairly early on as well and another thing that corn has that other swordsmen don't really have is a killing up throw now other swordsmen do have killing up throws but when you're killing with an up throw at like 190 percent you don't really have a killing up throw corn's up throw is pretty strong it kills you fairly early on again this is absolutely ridiculous but it's something that gives her a little bit of an edge that other swordsmen don't have she has some better combos than other swordsmen like it ain't roy stuff but again this isn't roy <laughs> like let's be realistic here corn is good she's in top five top six top ten character in the game good but she's still way better than people give her credit for just because she has a sword and she isn't absolutely broken that means she must be bad no, this character still has a lot to them. Their edge guarding is very good. Their ledge trapping is very good. The neutral combos are very good. The only downside of this character is they are a little bit slow, but I think this character has a place in the meta. We've seen people have success with them, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we see more corns rising up more and more, just finding out that, hey, this character has some nutty options. Now, our final character, and again, this isn't in any order, so this isn't the most underrated character in the game, just one of them, is going to be... Pikachu. Now, the way that Pikachu works is people just forget how good this character is. Then either Esam, Shiny Mark, Abadongo, Niroz, H4, someone does something crazy and everyone's like, this character is ridiculous. Their options are so stupid. I hate Pikachu. And then it kind of quiets down for another couple months. And right now we're in that recession of none of the Pikachu players are really doing anything right now. But in like one or two months, Esam's going to get another top eight. He might even win the tournament, beat MK Leo. Shiny Mark will actually just go to things and destroy people. Something's going to happen and people are just going to remember that Pikachu is is busted oh that's a little phrase i came up with right now hope you like that sure be sure to coin it but pikachu his aerial game is obviously ridiculous he's some of the best combos in the game every single time pikachu hits you with an aerial there's a chance that he either kills you off it confirms into it or edge guards you off it which is again just netting him a kill some of the best edge guard in the game i don't know if i say he has the best edge guard in the game anymore just because min min exists but like for people that actually edge guard like normal characters pikachu definitely has the best just because of how long that back air is out for and how deep he can do pikachu edge guarding is it's messed up it just wins him like half of the matchups i didn't really talk about matchup spread a lot in this video but pikachu's matchup spread is very very solid because a ton of characters are just invalidated because the second they get hit off stage they die pikachu does struggle a bit to kill because sometimes you have to go for a lot of 50 50s with your edge guarding and if you can't get the kills off the edge guarding it can be a little bit tough but even if it is a little tough you have nair drag down which kills up throw starts killing at pretty high percents, but it does start killing. Same thing with back throw as well, but mainly up throw. Dash attack is a super solid kill move, to be honest. It just gets a little bit predictable. But a great thing for Pikachu is he can close that space very, very fast with up B. Because up B is super broken. It basically just means, hey, I don't really want to deal with disadvantage anymore, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to get off the ledge for free unless you super hard call me up. But then again, if you do that, you kind of just got it. It gives you amazing recovery. It can use it like, to set up combos like Pikachu up B literally does it all as well as him having very very good camping with tjolt usage like pikachu just kind of has everything besides the fact that he's a little stubby but he can basically always choose when he wants to approach and his birch range is essentially infinite because again 
quick attack. He can just quick attack into your burst range. Oh, that didn't work. I just quick attack away again. This character is very good. If he hits you with a grab or he just grabs you at basically any percent, you're probably going to die. Thunder is in a very good X Factor move. He can have confirms into it as well. He's just really scary to deal with. And I know for a fact that people underrate Pikachu. And I think that's fine because the character is still really hard. And we don't have any results. But in a couple months, we'll have a Pikachu player make a run. And then you'll be like, do you know what? This character is pretty good. And I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm curious who your guys' most underrated characters are. And again, this isn't objective. Of course, this isn't in any order. These are just characters that don't get talked about a lot that I think are very good and could do a lot of damage in Ult's current meta. Except, you know, Doc. I just wanted to mention Doc because he is still he's, he's okay. Doc's okay, you know? But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to sub. All that yada yada video deals are always appreciated. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.